to me, the V&A is actually a, a miracle. The fundamental thing here was driven by the desire of the Capetonians to be reconnected with the water's edge and even the port activities. And that's why we retained, must have to retain the fishing industry because it created movement of ships coming in and out, the dry dock facilities, ships that had to be docked, you know. And then uh, besides that, of course, the port activity of the tugs and the floating crane and all that. People forget, you know, there was a time where you're not, when the whole harbour area was a no-go. Huh? I don't know whether you recall that. You couldn't get into the harbour at all. So one started from, from, from that situation. It was hard, hard work. It was difficult overcoming uh, s sort of people's scepticism and even antagonism. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the sceptical sort. I'm a sort of a optimist by nature. See the upside. And the times were very difficult times for South Africa, 1988. So I was always very optimistic about the opportunities for Cape Town. Well, I think the, the key hurdle was to fund the initial infrastructure. So access sewage. And there was no immediate return to that investment. The prospect was a long-term gain, but upfront uh, some serious money had to be spent. Uh, and Transnet uh, committed itself to that. Transnet is, a, as you know, a railway and a airport and a harbour company which focusing on transport and the VNA is a property development and I think the first hurdle that they run into they provide the seed capital in the beginning to get the original infrastructure going and a bar and so on in the beginning but then the, the competition for capital was the problem. Initial discussions particularly with the groups that were the major funders. Uh, they didn't immediately react. They, they were no believers. We, we were the believers. In the end, Transnet Pension Fund really partnered the waterfront company for the first 10 years. We were very conscious that whatever we did had to support the whole, and we owned the whole. So that was, that was a very strong strategic advantage. I think the, the concept of development that we followed was to start from the pier head and then working outwards was a very important component of the success of the development. And that was the magic that came, that came together. Uh, everything was analysed, everything was debated, but it was debated <clears throat> in an atmosphere which was just electric. Growth Point PIC acquired the waterfront in around the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. It was the largest single property transaction in South Africa, over a billion dollars. And I think it was good for South Africa in the sense that it showed that foreign investors could come into South Africa, buy a business and then successfully sell that business three years later. We always felt that at some point we wanted to see it back in South African hands. And the passion came from that. Together with the fact that, as I said, I was of the opinion that its usage wasn't necessarily fully developed. And what we had seen the previous owners do with it, although they had good ideas around it, the view we held was that it wasn't necessarily being exploited to its full. We were most delighted as Growth Point in late 2010 when the PIC approached us and said, you know, would we be prepared to partner them on, on this particular asset and the acquisition? I said, this is just the most spectacular, iconic asset, uh, probably the most uh, valuable asset on the African continent and, and one of the best waterfronts, if not the best waterfront in the world. You can look at what has happened um, since uh, the current shareholders took over the VNA. And what you will notice from what it had been just before we took over is that for quite a while it, it, it went through a, a period what I would consider to be slight neglect. I think it didn't really receive the kind of attention that uh, it, it requires as an asset uh, for the shareholders and of course as an asset for, for, for the Western Cape and the city of Cape Town. The main change with the new shareholders is that it has heralded the advent of a very active phase of investment and development in the waterfront. 
What really makes the V&A Waterfront work is that it is in a constant state of development and innovation in a way that takes care of not just the beauty of the opportunity in terms of it being a working waterfront, but the beauty of the surroundings. It has the finest backdrop in the world with Table Mountain. It is surrounded by the most beautiful fringe of the sea, but importantly, they make it its own iconic attraction. Funnily enough, one of my favorite memories of the v &A is participating in the Design Review Committee. Um, of which there have been very many over many years and the committee has been made up of a variety of really interesting people and the debates have been furious and um, at times challenging but it has, I feel that I've grown enormously through that experience and so I thank the Waterfront for having provided that opportunity but also to have taken the care and to have had these committees to control development and I think that's really my favourite memory. For me it's about how do we use our spaces a lot smarter and that's what VNA does well. They use all the space that they have and they use it quite smart and they keep it invigorating themselves. The most fascinating part for me is having done two due diligences, having walked the precinct on a hundred occasions if not more, I still discover new places every time I come here. Little, little nooks, little areas, little corners, little buildings that I didn't even you know, notice previously. So it's a constant, uh, almost journey of discovery when you come to the waterfront, it's fantastic. There are definitely different precincts um, in the V&A and they each have their own character. Um, but at the same time, there's also a V&A character which binds them all together. So I think you could say, for example, the marina area has more vegetation, has more landscaping, is more intimate. Whereas, for example, the shopping precinct is much more public and has larger squares um, and is very urban in character. But I think that they still bind together very much um, to create the V&A as a whole. Placemaking is a very simple term used to capture the fact that places tend to have emotional connectivity to the people that live in that place. So in other words, creating a sense of place. One indicator of that is whether Cape Townians are able to visit it, not to shop, but just to hang around. And if you get that right, it means it's a, it's a pool, it's, an, it's got an emotional pool. I'm, I'm feeling that in the last two to three years um, of its development, the waterfront is starting to get that quite right. And it's amazing to see what an inclusive place it has become where locals come and international visitors come and they all just mingle together. And certainly it's a great tourist attraction for the city. One of the things that the V&A Waterfront has always gotten right in terms of mixing both the tourists as well as the local residents and the people of South Africa is that they've made it theirs. They've made it the people of South Africa's and the world's to come here to play, to explore, to shop, to really feel as if it is a place that they can feel comfortable. The leadership team of the V&A Waterfront from the beginning have always wanted to make sure that the words exclusive were never attached to it. So that people who live here, people who work here, play here and visit here all feel as if they can create their own memories, they can experience it in a way that is relevant to them and they feel nothing but welcome and proud of being here. I can speak for myself at the personal level, the water has got a very calming effect on me and it's something that you can just sit and watch all the time. But connecting the city with the water and connecting the people of the city with the water, now that people can walk down to the waterfront, they can take the My City bus to the waterfront, it's all about water being the attraction. I think the biggest contribution that the VNA has done for both the city and the province over the last 25 years is that since inception, it's always been a working harbour that's transformed itself over many, many years to becoming an attraction and a globally recognised attraction as that. It's because it's where a place where anybody can come. And even just walking through the VNA coming here now, I just noticed the multifaceted number of people, different cultures, different backgrounds, different social status. And I think that's what the waterfront creates. It creates a place where anybody no matter who you are, what your walk of life is, to come to a place where you feel comfortable, safe, and actually quite relaxed when you walk around. So for me, I think it's not surprising because a lot of locals come here because it is that attraction where you can do so many things in one place and feel safe and it's accessible. And like you rightfully said, it's that where locals go to, a lot of international tourists want to go there to hang out with the locals and experience what locals experience. The waterfront plays a critical role to the city in so many different aspects. From an events point of view, it is, uh, represents certainly one of the most significant locations. Uh, for this year alone, the World Triathlon Series participated at the waterfront. 
We have the Volvo Ocean Race this year. We have a number of other activities that are located there and certainly the working cooperation between the city and the Vienna Waterfront is exceptional from the strategic level right down to the operational between the various teams that deliver events. Obviously the big events. One thing the Waterfront does fantastically well is that it can expand and accommodate. So in New Year we have 200,000 people here. Things like World, the World Cup, um, the uh, Red Bull Fluchtag, the Volvo Ocean, what, what gives me an immense sense of pride is just the way the waterfront can expand and accommodate all these people and it really, really does excel at these events. The top 20 events in the city contribute in excess of 5 billion to the city's bottom line. Um, lots of people think uh, pretty places and pretty things and parties are fantastic. There are serious economic uh, opportunities that between the city itself uh, as a major funder and major sponsor through city services and so forth, jointly with the waterfront, we make sure that the event economy contributes directly to the city's bottom line as well as to the bottom line of many industries. And I think it's become so much synonymous with the brand of Cape Town. So if people think about Cape Town, you think about the mountain, you think about Cape Point, you think about perhaps the wine lands, but you also definitely think about the waterfront. It's always part of that narrative of, of when you're selling it, of, uh, of what people just understand the brand of Cape Town. But geographically, the, 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 the waterfront still represents an enormous opportunity to grow. And I think there are enormous plans that I think you will see. I think if you drive to the waterfront at this point in time, all you see is, is cranes as you walk in and cranes everywhere you go. I think that will continue for quite a number of years to grow, but there's still a lot of, lot of what we in the language call bulk that still needs to be developed and we have uh, plans to, to do so. The waterfront is currently, um, and it's quite a surprise to many people, but it's really only two thirds of its potential potential development and I, and I believe it, it's got at least another 25 years to go in terms of development. And then as a, as a sort of major landlord of, of the economy, um, I think it is also, it's very, very much part of a, a driver in our economy and I think also the way that they're redeveloping, um, they're bulking up, um, the kind of, kind of uh, attraction that has for international companies to come and open their office space here. Um, it all adds to that mix and of course now the waterfront is growing uh, and joining up with the bottom part of the city, the convention centre, it kind of all moulds into one and it really does, uh, it, it's key to the economy of the region. We are so excited to be working on this project and for the last year to have been acting as a conduit between the VNA and the designers who have been the core focus of our work for over a decade. And you know, what is a truly novel experience is to work with an organization of this size that has such an authentic core value that is around people. The tenants, the uh, public that are coming in, they have invested an amazing amount of focus and input and authentic uh, vision. There is enormous growth in the creative industries in, uh, in South Africa right now, and design is just coming of age. Ten years ago, the diversity and the complexity of design brands that we have just didn't exist. And it's the absolute moment for the watershed to take these brands that are coming of age and put them onto a platform where they can truly commercialize their businesses and grow to the next level of, um, of professional success. I'm certainly most excited about the Museum for Contemporary Art in Africa. I think it's going to be a real draw card. Um, you know, Cape Town is, has been voted the, the number one desired destination by the New York Times. And as a major city, you have to have major draw cards like a museum. So I think there's a huge opportunity for us to create a, a fantastic institution which will be great for locals, great for young people, but also a real international tourist draw card. The success of Africa's most visited precinct was growing and there was this grain silo in the middle of it and then there was this synergy with the Zeitz uh vision of this man Jochen Zeitz who has the most incredible collection of contemporary African arts wanting to find a, the, the first place in the whole of Africa where a contemporary collection could be shown and this seemed the perfect site and we were chosen to design it. I think that uh, for the first time in Africa, uh, we've got a uh, institution that's going to be telling our, our story in our words and in our own unique context. And to see it transformed in this kind of way uh, with the beautiful uh, tower, 
uh, done in the kind of way that you make those Venice lampshades where the glass kind of punched out through a chicken mesh to create this billowing effect. That's going to be a lantern that's going to be an absolute landmark for tens of miles around. This institution will be the thing that really centralizes that attention and creates an institution to say, this is who we are, this is what we're capable of, and this is what we want to contribute to the world and to the, the discussion of creativity globally. I mean, it's gone beyond all expectations, obviously. And uh, I, th I do think it's added a lot to, to Cape Town. Wherever I'm traveling the world, whenever I come back here, your heart just glows with pride because this is a place that makes people happy. And, and to have had the privilege in life to be part of that creation, wow. <laughs>